that's the very dramatic opening by Barry Gray to Space 1999. I thought it was appropriate-ish music for some of my science fiction custom figures. Um, starting from the left is a 8 inch Mego style Roboman from the second of the Doctor Who feature films, Doctor Who uh, the Daleks Invasion of 2150 AD. This was one that I was quite pleased with actually. I used one of the more recent um, Action Jackson bodies. Um, so it's different from a 1970s one, but it's the right size. It was made for a, a custom challenge that I entered on a, a custom figure site. Just a bit of fun really. Didn't expect to win. There's no winners or losers actually in this particular challenge. It's just a, a taking part. But I actually did the whole costume on this, um, made from a strange bondage basque and Madonna type thing that I bought from eBay. So that was quite fun explaining why I bought that. Uh, but it had the right kind of PVC rubber finish that I needed. Quite difficult to work with considering the greatest sewer anyway. Uh, but it did work in the end. Uh, I was quite pleased to have got the details fairly authentically. Um, the helmet is an Action Jackson helmet, but with the visor removed, sprayed. Uh, I did the lines, uh, the clear visor, and the glasses underneath are the glasses, uh, the this kind of the the shield glasses that you get with the uh, original helmet. But I sprayed those silver, and I made the um, transistor unit that goes on the side of the helmet that the Daleks used to control. Daleks used to control the robot then. That was just made from modelling clay and bits and pieces that kind of looked to, all together look pretty much like what they would have done if they'd done a to toy of it. But I was quite pleased with that guy and he also he's in scale with the movie Daleks that Product Enterprise make. So that's quite good fun to have on display with those. Uh, continuing the Doctor Who theme is a 12 inch uh, Patrick Troughton, the second Doctor. Uh, all I can claim responsibility for on this was basically painting the head. Um, I believe it's an Ada Chan sculpt I got from eBay. Very good, looks very much like him. Unfortunately, um, in my opinion, he's gone, they went for the more grimacing, frowny trout and look. I perhaps would have preferred um, a blank expression or the benign kind of smile that he often flashed at villains to make them think he was a little bit stupid and a little bit of a dummy um, where of course he clearly wasn't and isn't as a character um, I preferred his more kind of chirpy smiley face uh, but nonetheless he's a very good likeness but the clothes were made for me by a lady called Vicky who has got a website Fabric in Time uh, she specialises in Doctor Who outfits uh, incredible seamstress so my thanks go out to her um, this guy here an 8 inch Pertwee style um, an 8 inch style Pertwee figure I should say. Um, Pat Pertwee very much, um, I'm on my earliest memories of Doctor Who are kind of abstract memories of, of Troughton's uh, time in the role um, but my real proper memories and my, my first love if you like as a Doctor is Pertwee, he'll always be my favourite um, although obviously there's something to be said for all the Doctors, uh, I've followed the series all the way through but um, I suppose it's like James Bond or whoever the first one you see is your doctor so this is my doctor uh, Mego style I actually made the cape uh, double sided um, and it's got the inner part as well double sided I sewed all of that the collar so so I was quite pleased with that not the greatest same job in the world but certainly for me I was, I was quite chuffed uh, I made the shirt and the tie uh, was ribbon obviously thin ribbon uh, the suit actually was Dr. Mego but I took the trousers in to be a little bit straighter the head I believe is a shrink or uh, perhaps a bit of a blow up of um, a late 80s or early 90s uh, Comet Miniatures per we head I'm not entirely sure it's not the greatest likeness in the world it's not bad though um, I'm just waiting until maybe Ada Chan does something like that of Pertwee and then I'll be really uh, excited. Moving on to the guy who was the star of the show we can hear the music from, Martin Landau, is Commander John Koenig. Um, it's a cast again from the now legendary Dr. Mego, 
cast of the Palatoy Amigo head. Um, I can't come in too close, uh, as we know that the camera won't really take it. But a very good likeness done then. This is only a, this is a resin copy um, that I painted. Uh, it was my intention when they did the classic TV toy uh, reissue and up sort of upgrading of the line a couple of years back. I wanted to have a Koenig in a space suit. So that's this guy. The suit is not really been changed at all. It's a classic TV toy space suit. It's on a real Mego body. Um, I think they must have prototyped these costumes to fit a proper Mego body. And of course the classic TV toys as well as not being made particularly well, weren't quite as tall. So consequently the costumes don't really look right. But you put one of those costumes on a proper Mego body and they suddenly seem a whole lot better. I like to think that's the case with this fella. Again, just a head paint. Um, with some nice accessory parts from classic TV toys that I just added together just to, to display really. Moving on to a personal favourite of mine is um, the star of my favourite live action Jerry Anderson show, Ed Bishop as Ed Straker from UFO. Um, again, a head paint from me. I'm very fortunate to have a friend who is a professional costume maker currently working on Harry Potter, he's worked on the James Bonds, he's worked on Batman, he's done all sorts of stuff and when it gets time and if I ask very nicely I often get um, costumes for the figures when I'm unable to make the costumes or there's not readily available pieces of equipment or uniform I can use and he did that on this. I wanted the figure to look pretty much like what a figure would look like. I've seen some very realistic paint jobs on this. I wanted to keep it kind of realistic but sort of what they would have looked like if they had done one in 1970-71 maybe a G.I. Joe type of thing it's a sideshow body uh, the costume is the costume that he wore in uh, Identified and it's always my fault that that's perhaps our toy company they generally do do figures uh, wearing costumes that the characters wore in the first few episodes because generally they're the first lot of photos that the film company allow toy companies to have access to. But it's a very, very nice sculpt, very good likeness to Ed Bishop. Um, there's a couple of others on the uh, internet at the moment that aren't so good at all. But this is a very good likeness. I've also got the Paul Foster head and the Alec Freeman head. So hopefully I might be able to share those soon when David does costumes for me. So moving on to the last guy is Patrick McGowan as the prisoner. Um, again, just a head paint from me. The trousers and the blazer with the piping were made by David for me um, some years ago. The jumper or the sweater is a uh, Miko Starsky blue turtleneck, which is the right colour and style to one that he wore often in the show. Um, it, you Again, you'll never see it because the camera's not good enough, but this is an incredible sculpt. Um, possibly the best sculpt I've ever seen of, a, of an actual actor. Um, I hope my paintwork does it justice. I'm sure you won't be able to see from there. But some nice sci-fi or spy-fi in the case of uh, The Prisoner or Number Six or John Drake, if that's what you want to think he was. Um, people who are into The Prisoner in Danger Man will know what I mean by that. Was he or was he not John Drake? But there you go, that's some of my custom action figures based on science fiction. Uh, characters from the 1960s and 1970s so thanks for watching everybody and uh, keep your eye I might throw a few more custom short films in along with items from my toy collection and, and stuff as well so thanks for checking it all out guys bye